know what he's talking <laughs> about. I can pronounce them. <laughs> so I gotta say, uh, that's what I did with my pre-med career, is I, I could pronounce all the Jimmy Neutron words real good. Here's a hypothetical. You've landed a role in a new animated film. You show up for the first read-through. Tell us what that's like. Um, how much input do you have in shaping your character? Give us sort of a, a walk us through that. Are you saying like in a, when you book a job in a cartoon for say, yes. you know, say, yes. like a series well, you know, of film? Uh, or a, film. a series of film? Yeah. What happens is usually, you know, it begins with the audition. You, you know, you guys get your copy and you, you know, I would tend to say that my first instinct is usually the right one. First best thought. First first thought, best thought, that saying, right? So you usually get a copy and you usually get a photograph of the character, which you'll, you know, and usually I just literally, like my first instinct is I look at the face, I look, I literally look around the room here and I look at people's faces and their teeth and their mouths and their lips and I, I literally have this internal game going on in my head like, I wonder how she sounds, I bet you I know how she sounds, and I know how she sounds. And I know how he's. And I don't mean to interrupt, yeah, I yeah. do mean to interrupt. But there was a person today when we were at convention signing, yeah. and EG and I both perked up, and we looked at this person with this voice that did not match. Yes. And we go, that person's voice is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The body is not in the same, it's not in the right voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, so basically, you basically, the point is, you get it, you get a piece of copy. Our, my first inst instinct is like, oh, that sounds like a really small, a smart boy. You know, he's like. Okay. Well, you know, we're we're gonna be working on this school project, and you know, he's like one of those really intellectual kind of guys. So I noticed like his mouth looks a little tight in the picture, and he sort of talks like this. And then, you know, then they might say, "You might book that job," and then you might say, "Okay, do we really love that character?" But the the, the guys have decided to fatten him up, right? So I might be like, "He sort of talks like this, and everything is very smart and meticulous, like this." And then also they might say, "Well." Make him a little chunkier. So then I sort of take him like this, and I sort of like add a little weight to him. And suddenly he cheeks a little bit fatter, and then suddenly his words don't go out right. So he's a little chubby guy who sounds smart. So that's what I do. So it's, I said, it's a little. Did you just hear that uh, happen in this room? It's a very subtle dialing in, like a radio. Yeah. But usually it's that simple. The director might say to you, dial it in, dial it a little right. wider, dial it a little small, and then pretty much your character. And then if you're doing a series like Rugrats, I mean, it took us it took us a while to, for really to hone down. We had the voices. But getting those human beings took time to grow, just like we take time to grow. So it is a process with a series. When you're doing a one-off, you just grab the character, you do the voice. You you usually you have that voice in you, and you know how that character acts. But when you get a series, like when you say Deb, you you really get a chance to develop that person, like Rugrats. <laughs> Tommy Pickles was was developed so thoroughly over 14 years. It's like it's a, it's hard not to you know yeah it's pretty fascinating. Debbie, can you recall times where you feel like you've really been able to inject your personality into Jimmy Neutron? Like Absolutely. Yeah. It, Tell us but, a little about that. Well, it, it does mm -hmm. happen over time. I mean the uh -huh. first uh, the first table read through you're doing you're what you're doing, told, pretty much. Yeah. What, you're doing what you auditioned for, which right. is what you think they want. Uh-huh. And as as the group works together, the writers and the actors and the director, you get this little flow going. You know, maybe the first episode as written. And then they see, oh, they do this thing, realize Jimmy Neutron, he, he has this thing that he can talk really fast, or he can cry really well, or right. um, he can pout really well. And so maybe the next episode, the writers will interject a little extra pouting, or a little uh, extra screaming, or crying, or they realize that the chemistry between, uh, say, Jimmy and Carl was the straight man, funny man. And so they'll make more of that. So that is something that it just happens over yeah. time. I totally forgot what the question was. No, it was exactly what you were just answering. Is is just um, how they what, develop? How do you develop yeah. that character? Or and what are you most proud of? Oh know? yeah yeah yeah. Um, well, I really also, also love this show I did with um, Howie Mandel called Bobby's World. Did oh, Howie let you touch him? No. <laughs> He's a germaphobe. He's never really been a, a touchy guy. A touchy I mean, it's, guy. it's a, He's always it's like, a this. But I mean, we worked in the, we breathe the same air. We were in the same room. We breathe the same yeah. space. The thing about Howie is because of his comedic background, he really um, uh, embraces the camaraderie of the actor. So it's one of those few series where we had all the actors in the room at the same time, and he would tell the engineers, yeah, let them overlap which is a taboo in voiceover. We generally will right. let someone finish their right. line right. and give it that just moment beat so that the engineer can get the yeah, other microphone up. Right. And with Howie's show, it wasn't that way. And I played his girlfriend, Jackie, who was, um, her mom watched Sally, Jeffrey, Jesse Raphael, and her energy was always really low. We called her like my Valium voice. 
<laughs> just the voice of reason, and very um, subdued all the time, sort of the, the conscious of body. So you, in doing that character, because you're a very bubbly person, you'd have to pull your energy down to do that too, right? Way down, and it was that same uh, place that Wednesday Adams initiated, because she uh, tend to um, bloom in gloom. You know. <laughs> Bloom and gloom. She wanted it. Wednesday on the Adams family. Uh huh. She wanted it rainy and dark, and that was when she was at, at her best. You know, one of my favorite questions to ask singers is always, you know, what does it feel like to, you know, hear your song on the radio? And obviously, you're both. She knows exactly. So I, I, I want to tell just, you my first time hearing my song on the radio. And and that is a that is a moment, a watershed moment for yeah. all of us singers. Tell us about your. Song. I was at the gym and I was on the treadmill, <laughs> and I was listening to the. They have the sound blasting in the gym, and I was and I was like, if you want my love, say it. And I heard on the work speaker, and I was like, that that can't be me. That's not me. And I was just pedaling, and I was like, holy crap, that's my song. <laughs> oh, and then God. I was like, that's my song. That's me singing. <laughs> And it was like such a big fat And it's door. different when you hear it on the radio than when you hear yeah. it in the recording studio oh, it's so or anything different. like it's that. Something like, yeah. How yeah. about you? Um, mine, my, um, I, although I had a country mm. band for seven years where yep. I wrote and arranged all these three-part harmonies for Honey Pig, yep. my success in music was mostly in preschool music. Yes. And I wrote mm. um, so many kids' songs, and I had one I wrote called Baby Banana. And I had a publicist at the, at the time, publicist, and I got all my stuff on XM and serious radio and my publicist sent me this thing that said baby banana just made it to the top of the charts <laughs> <laughs> preschool music and it's a hit at that time we turned the, the tv on the music station and uh -huh. my kid of course was you know oh, three four years old and and i you know heard my songs and my little baby boy <laughs> coming mommy on tv mommy on tv <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool yeah, to hear my really song cool. on the tv and and it came out all the time, and there were a That's bunch fantastic. of them. It was a big high. Big thrill. You both big got high. so animated even <laughs> then when we talked about those, mo those moments. Mm. Talk to us about your work ethic, because it must be awfully strong to have accomplished what you both have done in your careers as voice 